Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Lefebvre and today we are on part four of our watercolor drill series, except it's part two to part three. That's confusing. Either way, we are continuing with our color bleeds and our wet on wet technique, but this time I'm showing you how I incorporate those techniques into actual paintings. So let's jump right in. Okay, so we are on part two of our drills for wet on wet and color bleeds. And now I'm gonna show you how to actually incorporate them into a painting, little things that you can do to practice these to perfect them. So again, I am painting in my Etcher Lab cold press watercolor sketchbook, and I just have it clipped down to make sure it's flat. My Winsor & Newton professional watercolors, and I have my Princeton snap brush in a size 12 and my mop brush just to do a quick background if I need it. Just use the biggest brush you have. And then I'm just gonna grab a smaller detailed brush. So maybe a size four, my craft demo brush, whatever you have on hand, just to do some smaller detail. Okay, so how are we gonna incorporate these in paintings? The first one I'm gonna show you is my flowers. So wet on wet I use sometimes for petals to get a really nice soft gradient from like a dark to light color. Um, and then color bleeds, I usually use that for my leaves and stems bleeding into a flower. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So first, I usually ask you to make a light wash of a color first. And that's just creating a really, really light value of a color. So that just means using more water than pigment. So I just dip it in my pigment with lots of water. Make sure your brush isn't dripping because again, you don't want air, any areas pooling that is gonna kind of mess up your wet on wet. Now I'm gonna show you an example with a petal. So here's my light wash, okay? And if you're wondering about loading your brushes and stuff like that, how much water and pigment, um, I do have a video on that as well, which I will link below. Okay, so here's my light wash. And you can kind of see there's a bit of a pool here. So I'm just gonna dab my brush on my paper towel to dry it off a bit and just pick up that pigment. You can tilt your paper to make sure you get that nice light sheen, no pooling. And then what I'll do sometimes is I will go back in with more pigment and tap it in to get a nice little wet on wet gradient effect. Okay, sometimes I'll do it just at the base of a petal or sometimes I'll do it at the tip as well. And really what it's gonna do is when it dries, it's gonna create a nice soft gradient from a dark value to a light value to a dark value. This is also really great for shadows, for showing depth in your flowers. Okay, so we have that. Sometimes I'll go around the edges. And then you can even, to create really nice soft, kind of blurry lines to add texture on your, on your petals, what I'll do with that pigment is I'll do little lines like this. And it just creates these little blurry textured lines. If you were to do lines like that while it's dry, you're going to get sharp lines, but you'll see these are kind of blurred once it dries and it's really nice. One thing you have to remember when doing stuff like this, and I'll show you when we do kind of like a landscape down here, wherever your paintbrush lifts off, you're going to have a little explosion of color. So you want to make sure it's in an area where you want more color. So if I were to do those little lines and I were to lift off right here, I'll show you, you're gonna get more of like a dot right here. So lift off, see that dot? You want more color to be at the bottom and the sharper lines to be at the top. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like when it's dry. Let's do another one. Okay, again, a light wash and I just did a little color bleed like that. Okay, just connecting it, you'll get that little color bleed. Again, making sure it's not too, too wet, but a nice sheen. Grab your color. And again, my paintbrush is not dripping wet. How I do this is I wash it off, dry it on my paper towel, just dabbing it like this. And then I'll go into my color. Usually my color has a little bit of wetness to it already. Sometimes I will spray my, my water my water sprayer thing <laughs> to make the color wet so I can pick up that pigment. Um, you should always have your paints wet already before you start working. So create a little puddle in there so it's easier to pick up pigment. 
just throw a bunch of water in there and then you grab your wet or actually I'm washing off my brush drying it on my paper towel so I don't have a ton of water there's already water and pigment right here and that's how I'll pick it up okay and then tap the bottom tap the top and that's how you know that you're not grabbing too much color or water always dab it on your paper towel just so you don't go overboard with the water because again if you do that my brush you can kind of see it's a little bit more saturated here it might be a bit too much actually that wasn't that bad and then it will start to pool and run and you don't want that again you can always fix it of course my dog's coming into my office hello sir by drying your paintbrush on your paper towel and just picking up some of that pigment there's always a fix okay and again we're just going to do some of those little lines and i'm going to the base So those lines will be kind of exploding at the bottom there. Okay, you'll see a bit more once it dries. So that's kind of how I use wet on wet. That's one way and then I'll usually do the petals around. Another way I like to do wet on wet, um, like my rose, for example. So let's grab whatever color we have in here and I'll always start with a light wash, doing my little swirly swirls. Okay, making them bigger. Okay, always starting off with a light wash. And then to add depth and shadow to my rose, I'll go in with more pigment. So again, grabbing that darker pigment and I'll tap it in. See that wet on wet action? And it gives it some depth, like it's darker in the center of the rose, which it would be in a flower, right? So it looks like you get these little pockets of shadows and you'll see once it dries, it's really nice, soft gradient from light to dark, okay? So that's another way. And then another way that's a lot of fun too, same kind of thing as this. So let's do like a pansy, like I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna grab some purple, practice this with colors that are contrasting or complementary colors to get kind of a good feel of it. So I'm gonna create a petal here, a petal here, and I'm making it lighter on purpose. Okay, I'm just adding a bit more water on my brush and then a big petal down here. Okay, I'm just going to dry off my brush a bit to make sure there's not too much water or pigment on my brush. And I always leave a little bit of white area right there for the yellow to bleed in later. Again, adding wet on wet. Okay, and I'm just going to tap it in to the edge here. See that nice color bleeding all over the petal? You can do some of those lines that you like. I'm gonna tap in some more color. And then I'm gonna grab my yellow, my contrasting color, which will make brown if I don't tap it in right. Okay, you don't wanna move it around. So I'll start on the white and then I'll gradually just tap it into the purple and it will bleed into the yellow, giving that nice separate yellow right into purple. Okay, so that's for the wet on wet. And then for the color bleeds, which I love doing with my florals. I'm gonna grab some green. Okay. And I love doing this with my florals. You gotta make sure your flower's still wet. So the only one that's still wet is this one. I just dabbed it on my paper towel just to make sure there's not too, too much water because you don't want it to bleed too much into your petal. And I'm just gonna gently touch it. And you'll get a nice little color bleed. See that purple is going into the green a bit. You're just gently touching, just kind of skimming right beside it, giving it a chance to bleed in. So if you see that little bit of purple is bleeding into the green, which I love, is this still wet? No, it's not wet anymore. Okay. And we did this in our floral drill video with the little bud. That's a crusty orange color. <laughs> okay washing and drying off my brush make sure you dry it then pick it up your green i'm going to create the stem first and then i'm just going to gently let it bleed okay that's a even a bit too much water i'm just going to try and move it back a bit and again you can always fix it just by dabbing it with your paper towel wash off your brush dry it grab your bud color again I still have to do this sometimes. Sometimes I make mistakes, grab a little bit more 
of that stem color. Make sure there's not a lot of water in your brush. And let it bleed in a bit. You can do a little leaf. Let it bleed as well just by slightly touching it right there. And there you go. Okay, so that's how you practice your color bleeds and wet on wet with florals, okay? That's one of my main ways of how I use it. Now let's talk about a landscape. So I've done tree tutorials so many times, um, but it's kind of like the one I really like to do. Okay, so for the next one that I'm gonna show you an example of is a landscape. And one landscape that I've done a bunch of times um, are trees. And so if I'm doing like a forest landscape, I usually like to do layers of trees, but in the background, um, they'll be misty and kind of out of focus. So I'm actually gonna show you two different ones because I've done a couple landscapes like this and I'll give you an example of how to do that. So we're gonna start with our sky. So you can wet up your sky with just water or you can grab a light wash of a color. I'm using my mop brush. I actually don't need to be using it because I'm not wetting that big of an area, but it's fine. Try to make sure there's not a lot of water. Again, you don't want it pooling anywhere. You just want a nice light sheen. So tilt it, make sure you got everywhere that you need to. And then grab your color. I don't know what color, whatever, blue. And here's some wet on wet, okay? And I'm just gonna move that color down. Actually, let's make a little bit of a gradient from blue to yellow, okay? And we're gonna do that through wet on wet. Okay, so we have blue at the top. I'm gonna wash off my brush, dry it on my paper towel, grab a little bit of yellow, bring it down, okay? And then with color, because I don't want a green sky in the middle, so you don't wanna mix the blue and the yellow. You're just gonna gradually bring up that yellow. Make sure that blue in the middle is really light so you're not mixing really pigmented blue because then you will get that green. And then you're gonna just slowly move the blue down to meet the yellow and stop. Okay, so you're getting that blue to yellow without the green in the mix. So then we can darken up the sky a bit more by using our wet on wet. Actually, it's really bright. Use like indigo or something. Whoop, and that's really dark. It's fine. Okay, I'm gonna wash off my brush and dry it. Try and just move it around a bit. Okay, and using wet on wet for skies gives you a really nice soft gradient. I'm gonna wash off my brush. Okay, so there's no pigment on my brush and then I'm just gonna slowly move it down. Okay, wash off my brush, dry it, grab some yellow. Bring the yellow slowly up. Okay, so that's for a sky. Now, I like to add some trees like I said, to make it look like they're out of focus and kind of in the background. So I'm gonna grab a smaller brush because it's always safer to use a smaller brush for this so you're not at risk of adding a lot of water. And I'm just using a size four craft mo brush. I'm just gonna grab some Payne's Gray. And one thing you have to remember when doing trees on wet on wet, like I said, I think here with the lines, wherever you lift your paintbrush up, you're gonna have a little explosion of color. So you don't want little explosions of color at the tip of the branches of the trees. You want it in the middle where it's a bit more dense. So I'll show you what I mean, because I see that mistake sometimes often. So I always start with a line down the middle, okay? You don't want too much pigment or water on your brush, okay? And then I just slowly kind of do like a little zigzaggy pattern, okay? And wherever you lift your paintbrush up, it's gonna be a bit of a explosion of color, right? And you want a bit more color towards the center of the trees, not as much at the sides. This was actually a really bad example that I just did. <laughs> okay, you can go even lighter with color too. Okay, let's try again. A vertical line. Okay, I had a bit less water on my brush this time and I'm gonna bring it into the center. You can do zigzaggy lines or you can just bring some lines into the center like that. Okay, and once this dries, it's gonna look like there's trees in the misty background, nice and out of focus, like they're nice and blurry. Okay, and the more pigment you use, 
So the darker the tree is, the closer to the foreground it looks. The less pigment you use, the more water, but not a lot of water, um, the lighter the color is, it will look like it's further in the background. So I usually would start with really, really light trees. Okay, so lighter in color. And then once it dries, I would layer on top. And layering is gonna be in our next video. So I'm not gonna layer on top here. We're just doing the out of focus background trees. Okay, let bring those lines into the middle of the tree. Do not let them lift your brush up at the tips. Okay, even less paint. And you'll see what this looks like when it dries. It looks like there's trees in the, in the background. They're out of focus. Okay, and then a color bleed that I like to use with this, with, with um, landscapes sometimes, is I'll take my wet brush and I'll just run it against the bottom here and let that color bleed into the ground. And that also creates this soft line so it's not so harsh. It looks like it's misty. Let's grab like a little bit of green and purple to mix like a really dark green. Okay, and you get that really misty kind of look. So that's really great for when you're doing skies, backgrounds, landscapes, okay? Getting this really nice soft background, okay? And then once this, my dog, once this would be dry, then I would start layering some um, trees in the front, in the foreground, and that would make them nice and sharp, okay? So this is usually, wet on wet is really great for backgrounds. Another example that I've done of this before was I did a like a lavender field, I think it was. And if you look at that tutorial, so I did a sky, so let's do a sky, and the sky was actually like a yellow and a purple. So I'm gonna do like a little sun here that's going to be like just white so i'm just leaving a little circle there and then i'm going to wet up around it with just water okay and i'm going to show you how to, to do wet on wet like a gradient sky with yellow and purple which are contrasting colors so you got to be careful right okay so first i'm going to tap my yellow around closest to the sky or to the sun then I'm gonna wash and dry off my brush and I'm just gonna gradually move it out. Okay, I want it to get lighter in pigment. So once I put that purple, it doesn't really mix with the yellow and create a brown. See how light it is getting out here? Then I grab my purple, get a light wash, keep dabbing it on your paper towel. And then I'm just gonna slowly move it around that area, so we have a purple and yellow kind of sky, but they're not really mixing. Okay, grab my purple, put it as far from that yellow as I can. Wash, dry off my brush, and that's when we start to kind of bringing them closer together. Okay, just moving it around. And see it's not mixing, but they're just slightly touching. See that? Again, I'm gonna wash and dry off my brush. I'm gonna grab that yellow, make it a bit more rounded, bring it out a bit more. Okay, there we go. And then for the lavender field, what I did um, is I did some lavender that was out of focus. So I'm just gonna grab some purple and maybe some Payne's gray just to get it darker, like it's in the background. Can't really remember exactly what I did. But I'm going to do the, lab the stick of lavender. So the stem, again, if I were to lift off up here, you're going to get a little burst of cover. So I'm going to start from the smallest part going down. Okay, and this will be like down here will be the ground. And then I did little, I'm going to take even more pigment off my brush and create those little sprigs of lavender. Okay, and it will look like it's out of focus once it dries. And then... Once that dries, I would do sharper ones over top or in the foreground. 
and it just really gives your painting some depth. Let's do another one. See too much water on my brush. It happens. It's okay though. And I didn't do the ground, but that's okay. Just wanted to kind of show you how to do this like out of focus kind of look. And then you can always do your ground with whatever color you need. Okay, so those are two examples of how you would do it in a landscape painting. And then the last way I'm going to show you is with animals. So, or it could be anything, people, faces, whatever. Um, I like to create shadows first on the first layer with wet on wet. Not as much... Um, color bleeds, but wet on wet. So let's just do a really rough cat face. <laughs> okay. Like a cartoony kind of cat. Okay. So it's an orange cat. Okay. I'm starting off with a light wash. Here's an ear. Here's an ear. Okay. And then I'll start adding in some darker shadows before we get into the detail because the detail will be wet on dry. So I'm going to grab a darker color, so maybe some like brown, and I'm just going to start dropping it into where I would think there would be a bit of shadow. So in the ears, under the chin, on the head, maybe a bit there, maybe on the cheeks a little, maybe get even a little bit darker. And you'll see it. It looks always crazy when you do this first layer of shadows. Again, make sure it's not pooling anywhere because you don't want weird pooling areas. That also causes the paper to dry at a different rate and that's when you get those funky marks. Okay, so this is doing wet on wet with animals. Okay. So let's just leave that like that. I'll show you with a bird as well, um, which I've done a few times. Let's do a robin or something. So just going to do my outline so I always do a circle then a circle let's just fill it in connect those lines I have a tutorial on birds okay so we have our light wash a little tail here and then I'll grab some brown bring it along the back Okay, and this is so great for like loose animals too, where it has a really nice specific style. I'm gonna grab some darker color. It also helps create a nice shadow underneath for when you start doing your detail on top later. and creates this beautiful watercolor look. Let's wash, dry off our brush, grab some orange and red for the chest for the robin. like that. And a way you could do the color bleed, actually, for like the feet or something. So I'd grab a smaller brush, grab some darker brown, and I would just touch there and you get a little color bleed at the bottom. The feet makes it look really cute and like loose. Maybe I'll add some darker bits under the chin here. You can even do a little bit of color bleed for the beak. Okay, it's a nice little loose bird. Okay, and then I'll show you um, what we're gonna look at next time with layering some detail on top. So I'm just gonna let this all dry quickly and then we'll come right back. Okay, so now we're back, everything's dry and we're gonna get into layering in our next drills video because I have some other tips and really cool practice things that you can do with layering. But I don't wanna leave these paintings just like this because they do look a little weird. So I'm just gonna give you a little um, insight into what layering will look like in our next video. And there's gonna be tons more on layering too. Um, but for like our landscapes here, you know, you're gonna be putting those trees in the foreground so it's nice and sharp because we're now we're working with a wet paint on a dry background so you get this really nice effect of having those misty trees in the background because of the wet on wet 
okay? And then you get these really nice sharp trees in the foreground like that and then you'll just keep going all the way across okay and then you can still use that color bleed which I still do is I wet my brush wet and dry off my brush and I still go along the bottom and it makes it look like a misty bottom like that you get that little color bleed there okay same with the lavender here okay I'll do some in the foreground Okay, but see how you have that contrast of those ones in the background looking so nice and out of focus. It really just adds a lot of depth into your painting to use that wet on wet technique to get the layers of out of focus and misty and then the, the detail in front. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And then even with my flowers, I usually don't do too much detail on my loose flowers because they're loose flowers. But sometimes like with the pansies, I'll then go back in and just add some sharper lines. So wet on dry, and that's part of our layering. Or maybe even some, you know, lines on the leaves. Totally up to you and your style and what you wanna do, but that's layering for that. And then lastly, with our animals, you're definitely gonna need to add some layers on top of wet on dry because they just look a little weird, right? So, Let's do like our little cat face here. Just do like cute little happy eyes. And the little mouth. Okay, you can even add a little bit of fur. Okay, with our layering, which I will also get into a bit more later. But that shadow underneath really adds a lot to your animals so it doesn't look flat underneath you're not just working on a flat color in the background you get those little bits of shadow from the wet on wet and then same with our bird you would add an eye and then maybe some detailed strokes okay so that's the beauty of wet on wet and color bleeds so do these as practice pages and drills and I guarantee you will perfect it all and master them. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day guys. Bye.